Okay, so this is a video to help you understand where the basics of these new three properties come from. Okay, and so um, we're going to start out with this example. If I have x squared times x to the fifth, okay. So just to be clear, we're multiplying these expressions. Okay, when we're multiplying these um, terms with exponents, there's something that happens. If you notice, x to the second power, this one, really means that there's two x's being multiplied. Remember, that's the definition of exponent. Now, we're multiplying it with x to the fifth, which means x times x times x times x times x. So you see there's two x's being multiplied, multiplied by five more x's. And so you notice that when we want to express this as an exponent, we're really figuring out, well, x to the what power? How many x's are being multiplied? And you notice, even though we're multiplying this whole thing, you notice we're kind of just adding how many x's there are. There's two x's being multiplied and five x's being multiplied. So there's seven x's being multiplied. So I want you to understand that when we're multiplying these exponents that have the same base, a shortcut we can do with these exponents is adding them together. So this is seven, x to the seventh. And it's the same way for even if I have a number, three to the third times three to the fifth power, this means, this exponent of 3 means that there's 3 of these 3's being multiplied. And then you have 5 more of these 3's being multiplied. So remember, we're all, it's all about multiplication. And what we can do with these exponents is we can just simply add these exponents. We're not adding this whole expression. It's not a plus here. That's not what it is. So this would be 3 to the, how many 3's are being multiplied? 3 to the 8th. So that's what's telling us about this. When we, whenever we have an exponent, let's say to the a times x to the b, one shortcut we can do is what we can simplify this is by just adding whatever a and b are. This would be x to the a plus b. Now don't get confused by this little, um, this little expression we wrote here. Okay, and so. Um, that's what the first property is. When we're multiplying, when we multiply these exponents with like bases, we can just add the exponents. Okay, that's very important. That's our first property. Our second property, let me change the color, let's change it to red, is if instead of multiplying, what if I do x to the fifth over x to the sixth? So we're dividing. That's the key. We're dividing these okay, exponents with like bases. What happens here? In the same way, what we're going to do is we're going to write out an expanded form, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over x times x. Now, one thing to know here is when you have any number divided by itself, so x divided by x, just like if I said 4 divided by 4, that would just equal 1, right? And so x divided by x really just simplifies to 1 over 1. Now remember, 1 times anything is just that anything. And so that's why we kind of say it disappears, technically. And so here's, an, here's one pair that's gone. And here's another x divided by x. And so if you think about it that way, you're left with how many x's? 3. And so this answer is x to the third. And you know what it really looks like? It really just looks like if there's 5, and you take away these 2 that cancel out from it, or 5 minus 2, it gives you x to the 3. So when we're dividing exponents with the same bases, one shortcut we can do is subtract the exponents. We're not subtracting the whole thing. We're just subtracting the exponents. So if I have 4 to the 7th power over 4 to the 3rd power, that means there's seven of these. And you can sort of see at see it as, well, three of these fours down here are going to take away from the seven because they're going to simplify to one. And you're left with four of them. So this would be four to the fourth power. So those are the first two um, ones that we're doing, okay? Now, these are pretty simple in nature, but you should understand why it works. Okay, now we're going to talk about the third one. Now, the third one I know might be a little confusing, so I'm going to go 
Let's go through this pretty slowly, okay? So hopefully you're listening carefully. If I have an x to the second power, and I just raise that to another exponent, like to the third power, I want to show you what this really looks like, and then maybe you can start seeing a pattern. This means, so first of all, let's look at this 3. That means it wants this expression to multiply 3 times. So there will be 3 of these. So that means there, here's 1, right? If you want to put it like this, fine. Here's another, and here's another. Oops, to the second power. So you notice now it's x to the second times x to the second times x to the second. And so there's three groups, right? There's one group here, two groups, and three groups here. Now, if I were to break this down even more, this would just be x times x, right? So here's a group of here's a group of x squared, here's another group of x squared, and here's another group of x squared. You notice there's two of these, two of these, two of these. Isn't that repeated addition, which is multiplication. So three, three of these times two. So how many x's are there in total? There would be six. So this would be x to the sixth power. Let's do another example. Let's do five to the third power raised to the, let's say to the fourth power. That means there's Four of these five to the third. So let's write it. Five to the third times five to the third times five to the third times five to the third. Now, remember, there's now we could use our properties we've learned before. Like when we're multiplying, what can we do with all of these exponents? Remember, we can add them together because there's three of these five times five times five, right? 5 times 5 times 5. You see how we're just really going to count how many 5s are being multiplied. And so this is repeated addition. There's 3 in each of them, and there's 4 of them, right? So 3 times 4 is 12. So this would be 5 to the 12th. I hope that shows you that when we raise a power to a power, you see the shortcut we can take right here. I really wouldn't call it shortcut, just more an observation. You can, This is really four groups of the three, so that's 12. Three groups of the two, and that's six. And so that's why when you raise a power to a power, all you really need to do is multiply it. Okay? And you can clearly see that when you expand it out, it's going to work out where you multiply the exponents. The reason why is because if I give you a problem like six to the third power times to the tenth power, it would be really tedious to write these out 10 times, wouldn't it? So that's why it's good to know these little shortcuts. So it's, this would be 6 to the 3 times 10, or 10 groups of 3, that would be 30. All right? Now, we're going to also... Hold on. Let me pause real quick. We're going to talk about when you have multiple things. So let me break it down real... Um, Okay, let me break it down, hold on, okay. Whoops, how come it didn't go down? Whoa. Okay, here we go. No, I do not want this. I wanna draw, okay, here we go. So if I have something like this, x, y, squared to the third power. Notice there isn't just one thing that it's going to be raised to the third power. There's two things. Now, first, before we do that, let's kind of look at what this looks like expanded form. So this is x, y squared, right, to the third power. So that means you want it three times. So this would be x, y squared times x, y squared times x, y squared. Now you notice, if we focus on just one of them, let's look at the x. How many x's are being multiplied? Now remember, if there's no dot there, it really means the same as multiplication. So there's three x's, and sometimes I like to put the one here, just to remind myself, oh, there's only one x, one x. So x times x times x is just x to the third power. 
Well, let's look at the y's then. y to the second times y to the second times y to the second. Hey, isn't that just repeated addition? So 2 plus 2 plus 2, that's y to the 6. That's y to the 6. Now, I want to, so this is our answer right here. But I do want to go over how we got this answer because it's good to know these little efficient shortcuts to solving these problems. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to write this out here. I want to show you how with this we can get x to the third, y to the sixth. And the key here is going to be to remember that everything gets raised to the power. So y to the second gets raised to the third power. And remember what we just learned up here, that when you raise a power to a power, you would multiply them, or three groups of two. So this would be y to the sixth. Bam. Right? Now what about the other one? Let me use a different color. This would be x. Now x also gets raised to the third power. Now you'd be like, what's x raised to the third power? Now remember, if there is no exponent there, there really is a 1. Nobody writes it, though, because if you say x to the first power is the same as x, you're just implying that there's 1x. And so if you were to write this 1 here, you would clearly see that 1 times 3, or 3 groups of 1, is just 3. So this would be x to the third power. You see, that's how we get the same answer. And this is why... The power to a power rule is important because then you can save some time instead of doing all this work out here to figure this out. Let's do an example. Let's do 2, let's say, a, b to the second power, c to the third power, raised to the third power. Now, I know you're like, whoa, that's a lot here. But let's just focus on each individual letter and number, okay? Let's do this. It's not too bad. Let's first do 2. 2 to the third power. Now, remember, if you don't see anything, it's really a 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. So it would be 2 to the third power. Let's do this next one. A. A. Remember, if there's nothing there, it's really to the first power. So if you want to do power to a power, 1 to the third power, or 1 times 3 is 3. So this would be A to the third power. And lastly, or not lastly, we have b to the second power raised to the third power. That's going to be b to the 2 times 3 is 6. And then lastly, we have c to the third raised to the third. Remember, 3 times 3 is 9. c to the 9. That would be our answer. So you see, it's not too bad if you focus on each individual number or variable. Okay? So hopefully this clears up a little bit about the three different properties, okay? Whoops, I dropped something. Okay, all right, cool.